Hello, this is 42% Noir and in this uh, short uh, video I'd like to explain a bit about how we do simple attraction. I think it's a nice exercise that contains uh, important and basic uh, geometry manipulations. So I think it will be very interesting to see how we do it with the uh, GGen and also you can further explore and use this patch. So I just stopped it here in this point and you can see that what we try to achieve is the formation of these vertices tower the traction point. Uh, however, uh, the points or the vertices that are further away from this attraction point will not deform. So what we will do uh, is basically create this function of distance between the point and the vertices. So each vertex will have a distance to the point and this will be the weight for an attraction force. So let's see how it's done. We have two G gens. In the first one we create the uh, distances. Let's see exactly what we achieved here. We have a uh, sort of in one and in two. It in one gets the geom the vertices from the geometry. You can see here that I took it from one, which one is from here. And the second one takes the matrix with the point attraction, which contains only three values, which are the components x, y, z of this point. So here we're trying to get the distances. How do we do that? The distances can be written down as uh, d equals square root of the sum let's write it explicitly for vx minus px this is squared vy minus py and for the Z1 as well. And so basically with doing the difference we get this results it's a vector a difference vector and then what we do is the inner product which inner products give us exactly what we want or about what we want I'll just write it down what the inner product is so if you have two vectors a dot b that corresponds to a 1 times b1 plus a2 time b2 etc and that's exactly what we achieve when we do the inner product when we take the inner product of a vector with itself because we have the square this will be a1 a1 a2 b a2 so we have the square over the result of the difference vector and it sums up so that's what we have here summing up over all the components now the square root give us the absolute distance and we can live also let's say with the squared distances so we don't have to take the square root of the distance and that because we don't want to do operations that we don't have to 
and in that case we still get the information that this vertex will have a short distance, this will have longer and this will have the largest distance if even if it's a square distance still uh, the property that we want now what I need to do is to somehow weight it because I don't want to use a, an unknown value so that can be 0, 10, 20 I want to weight it so I'll have uh, values from 0 to 1 so all I need to do is divide by d2 max now ideally you divide it by the maximum the maximum distance uh, well you can find the maximum distance uh, it's a nice exercise but it's uh, an expensive expensive operation so I would just approximate it and what we can do is taking the distance from here to the center of the sphere and then add the radial size which is a scale yeah let's say here is let's say this is certain point and we do exactly the same with the dot from the center here in this case the center is zero so it's very easy uh, but then we can add another 0 0.8 I did some manipulation on that but that's the the spirit of it uh, so you can check it but the important part that this will be the largest distance so when we divide it here we get the weight and it's not exactly the weight that I want I want I call it white weight tag I want the uh, the reverse weight or the complementary weight because because I want that this weight will be the largest and this weight will be the, the smallest so I'm just doing 1 minus W tag so that's what we do w, 1 minus W tag is corresponding to do minus 1 and then times everything by minus one and after we did that we just need to now move things according to the weight so that's what happens here we send the weights here we send again the locations of the vertices the all the vectors and we send also again the point so that's what we get inside we can say that our new V the updated V can be the previous V plus the weight for each vertex for each vertex and oh nice and that the element wise product P minus V minus P the previous V minus P so basically we take this distance that left not the distance the difference between each component X Y Z because that's vector times the weight so basically we started with a certain location we find the difference how much you will move toward this point so if I have a small W like here they won't uh, move at all because it, this one will be very small no? okay so what you see is not very controllable yeah I need to control a bit more what I can do with this attraction so what I will do is for example I can add factor here 
so it's a scalar factor that we can control the intensity and I can also add oh, and I can also add an exponent factor. Let's stop it. Okay, excellent. So another factor will change how drastic would be the decrease in the weight. Yeah because when we use the exponent, we will have an exponential change in the weight. So, I'll just copy it and go back in time. Great. And now, I'll wait. Okay, so if it's one, it doesn't do anything. And this will just change the intensity because this is this uh, scalar. And now if I change the exponent, you can see you see that in a very big exponent only few vertices are changed. And we can Which around and let's add dimension here. Let's increase the dimensions. Now you can see it clearer. Yeah, so we can see it now. So it works for both sides also, inside sphere and outside the sphere. So that's a very simple way and we don't do much and we get this nice behavior. Thanks that's all and if you have any question please do ask and I hope you can explore it further and that's all. Bye bye.